Howdy folks, I'm Miserable Muska, messily munching minuscule morsels. I'm Amber. And here are more minuscule morsels for us to munch on. And Amber, since you're our guest today, what exactly am I? Well, you say you're a fly, but you look like a space cat to me. If it looks like a fly, it flies like a fly, but it says it's a space cat, then it must be a space cat. Let's get started. Amber's like, that's opposite of what I said, Brian. <laughs> All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for kicking out my sister for asking my husband to father her kids? My husband, Dan, a 40-year-old male, and I, a 36-year-old female, had my sister, Morgan, a 33-year-old female, and her wife, Chris, a 35-year-old female, along with my parents, two sets of aunts and uncles, and a few cousins over for dinner during Easter. Morgan and Chris have been married for several years and have been on a fertility journey to start a family. During childhood, Morgan and I always role-played as mothers, and I know that, like me, she's always wanted to have kids. She and Chris are great with my sons, and I know that they would make excellent parents. I know that they have been talking about the steps to become parents, and so when they said that they had an announcement over dinner, I was excited, hoping to hear that I was becoming an aunt. I almost cried when my sister announced that they had found a sperm donor. I thought that this meant that they had found a doctor through IVF clinic. Everyone was ecstatic, and we all started asking about the donor's traits. Like, what about his profile? Trying to get a feel for what our little niece or nephew might be like. They started to get cagey and avoiding eye contact, saying that we misunderstood them, that they hadn't found a donor through IVF, that they were trying to tell us that they've decided on a person. Dan, my husband. Dan and I were both confused. Apparently, they hadn't bothered to fill in Dan on this plan. So he was just taken as back. So he was taken just as back as everyone else was. Apparently, my children are so cute that they wanted their own versions. Literally. They think that Dan plus my sister's DNA would make pretty much the same kid. Except this time, Chris told me that she just knows it will be a girl. Which, in my opinion, is ridiculous to say. I just looked around the room and everyone was just silent and awkward. Dan asked them if they were serious or if it was just some kind of weird joke. But they were adamant that they meant it. I told them that they were sick in the head. And Morgan called me homophobic and I kicked them out of my house for insulting my husband, children, and marriage with their little stunt. Dinner fizzled out pretty quickly after that and everyone just kind of awkwardly left after Morgan and Chris and Dan and I were in just some sort of state of shock. After I calmed down a bit, I sent Morgan a text saying that it was pretty sick to ask my husband to father their child, and it was gross to consider her having my child, children's biological siblings, and if she can't see that, then she should lose my number. Dan also sent them a message saying that in no certain terms would he ever consider being a sperm donor, and was upset that they had raised it at a family dinner rather than approach the two of us privately if they had wanted him to donate. I've been getting bombarded with messages from family and some friends saying that I completely overreacted and that I'm being unreasonable, homophobic, and controlling. The overwhelming consensus from everyone is that I'm overreacting, but these are all people who've been on this fertility journey with Morgan and Chris for years now, so have a vested interest. I want an unbiased opinion. Am I the jerk for acting this way? All right, folks, what do you think? No, I don't think OP is in the wrong here. I mean, I do think some of her messages she could have handled a little bit better, but this was a really, really awful thing to do someone, to put Dan on the spot and be like, yeah, I'm having your babies. Like, the time if you want someone to be a donor for you, you need to approach them privately and have a private conversation. Don't just announce at a family dinner, yeah, I've made this choice for us and, uh, you know, you don't get to have reproductive autonomy. You are going to give me the kids that I want. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest problem I have is that they didn't approach Dan and OP and try to discuss this ahead of time. I think that calling them sick maybe was a right. little far, and they think that they phrased things maybe perhaps not the best, but they were probably also in shock at the moment here. Yeah, I mean, because there's nothing wrong with people, like sometimes people do have their siblings act as donors for them, yeah. and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Um, but I think that the gross part was to basically tell him to not give him any say and yeah. just like demand this in front of everyone so he feels pressured to comply. Yeah, I think that that felt a little manipulative. Like they expected him just to go along with it for the sake of like keeping the peace during the family dinner. And also uh, their language about how 
if they're already expecting a boy, a girl, and they also think that this, I mean, if if they have a little boy, is this going to change how they treat the kid? I mean, I mean, it might. You know, it does seem like they were kind of trying to pin it like OP was a failure because she had sons, and so. Yeah. So I think that there's a lot wrong in the situation. I wouldn't say that OP's in the wrong. I also wouldn't necessarily. I would say that the, the they are in the wrong for the way they presented this, mm -hmm. but I don't think that they're in the wrong for suggesting to use Dan as a donor either, right? I don't think that there's anything inherently twisted about that. No. Um, I think that it's just a more of a private conversation type thing. Well, that's thing. the thing. It needs to be a private conversation, and it needs to be one where there's no hard feelings that the other party says no. Yeah. They made it very clear that they had a vested interest in this, that this needs to happen, and there was no option for Dan to say no, and that is not okay. Yeah. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a Jerk? For asking my wife to wear a t-shirt over her bikini when we were at the beach with friends. And Amber wants to read this one. I'm a 31-year-old male. Wife is a 29-year-old female. Recently, over the Easter break, we went on a vacation. Me, her, and our three-year-old son. We were staying in a beach area, and it was really bright and sunny. We ran into two friends of mine by pure chance. We were later hanging out at the beach, and my wife was wearing a bikini, but I was wearing a shirt. I couldn't help feeling uncomfortable and insecure, because I know these two guys. I know what they're like and how they talk. I know they'll be looking at her. I didn't say anything, and I kept quiet for the day while she hung out with them and went swimming, while I mostly hung around with our son and looked after him at the beach and took him to the park and playground. Later that evening, I broached the topic with my wife. I told her I'd feel more secure if she wore a shirt over her bikini top. She did not take it well and got quite upset and angry. To me, she's incredibly beautiful and the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life, both face and body, but to her, she's been historically very insecure about her body, especially her chest. She's mentioned many times wanting a reduction surgically and how she hates having a big chest and how she thinks it's not feminine and ugly and not beautiful. I disagree, but I don't invalidate her point of view. She did not take well to my suggestion, even though I tried to explain why. She said I was making her feel ashamed of her body, even though that wasn't my intention. I just said I don't want two lecherous guys who I know very well staring at her in that way and probably later making comments to each other. She didn't buy it and was mad at me. Next day, she was angry at me the whole day and in a sour mood, and again, we spent the day at the beach. She ignored my suggestion about the t-shirt completely. She hung out with them, going walking and swimming while I stayed and looked after our son the entire time. On the drive back home, she was angry and still ignoring me. I tried to apologize, but I think I might have crossed the line and inadvertently made her insecure over her body and brought back old memories of insecurity. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think about this one? Yeah, I think Opie's in the wrong here. I like how he's putting all the blame, not on the creepy guys being creepy who he also happens to be friends with, even though they're creeps, but on his wife. She has to cover up because they might have lecherous thoughts about her. So I think that this is really up to her comfort level. I mean, I can certainly understand him, you know, talking to his wife about how he's uncomfortable with his friends and their behavior, but... I don't know. Like, I feel like that should be a conversation between him and his friends mm -hmm. and saying, hey, you folks need to tune it down. You're acting inappropriate or something like that, as opposed to telling his wife that she should, you know, especially one who has a body image issue that she should cover up or whatnot. I think that it really was kind of asking to bring about more of her, her insecurities, you know? Yeah, well, and it's not her responsibility to cover up. Like, no. these men, you know, are capable of controlling themselves. And it actually doesn't sound like they were overly creepy to her during the interaction. Opie's just afraid about them talking about her behind her back. Which, like, again, that's a conversation to have with the friends and not with the wife. Yeah, and I, I just really think that that's where this goes. I don't think that OP was right to try to make this demand out of his wife, uh, especially if she has these body image issues. And I think that he really, if he doesn't like his friends and the way they act, then maybe he needs to find new friends. Well, that's the question. That's my big wondering through this whole thing is if he thinks these men are so creepy, why is he friends with them? Why is he bringing them around his wife? 
Right. Like, I understand they just happened to run into each other, but couldn't he have suggested, oh, hey, honey, why don't we go uh, do something else today? You know, like, hi, bye to the friends and just leave. Yeah. And then what do you think about her spending the whole day with them walking on the beach? I mean, I think she was, it sounds like the second time around, she was clearly upset with her husband and, you know, just not wanting to deal with his nonsense. And like, you know, I think if he had issues with spending time with them, that's a separate conversation to have, but he doesn't also have a right to dictate. Like, I understand if he's taking all the parenting responsibilities and Mm -hmm. he wants to share them, that should be a two-parented approach. But it doesn't sound like he had any problems with looking after the kid. It sounds like he was just upset that she was hanging around with his friends and they had the potential to be creepy. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel the same way. But uh, let me know what you folks think, though. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, I'm a 34-year-old female and my husband is a 30-year-old male and he has secretly been donating sperm on Facebook. Is there any way back from this? Hi, guys. I'm going to have to anonymize some details, but I'll try to keep this as close to what happened as possible. I'm a 34-year-old female, and my husband is a 30-year-old male, and we've been together for almost a decade, dating six years, married for three. We're both rational, and we generally are risk-averse people, and we loved each other madly. I never would have expected that there could be anything that he could do to make me consider leaving the marriage until last week. Well, one piece of important context, my husband, I'll call him Jeff, has a lesbian sister. I'll call her Lisa. Lisa and Jeff are two years apart. Lisa is older, but they're more like identical twins, super close, and I swear that they can read each other's minds. It's freaky. Four years ago, right before me and Jeff got engaged, Lisa and her wife, we'll call her Sarah, decided to start their family. They had a ton of problems with sperm banks, too expensive, overly anonymous, And they were freaked out by that doctor who secretly impregnated his own patients. Bad stuff all around. So they ended up using a donor that they found on a Facebook group. Jeff and I were fully along for the fertility journey and all the ups and downs. And Lisa and Sarah ended up finding a great guy. Kind of weird, but it worked for them. And now they have an incredible little goblin starting kindergarten next year. Fast forward to now, I just found out that my husband has been donating sperm on these Facebook groups for the past two years. I was so devastated and furious. When he finally came clean, I basically felt like he had been cheating on me, and it was obviously a huge trust violation. Even worse, we've been trying to have kids ourselves, and so far, nothing has worked. Our own fertility struggles are a huge stress, but I felt like that we were going to go through it together. When he finally told me, I packed up my stuff and I left to stay at my mom's house. A few caveats that make the situation more complicated. He's only donated to LGBTQ plus couples. He only does artificial insemination, no uh, intimate or physical contact. He doesn't keep in touch with the couple afterwards and he's not involved with the kids. It's just fully the mother slash couple. He's asked not to be involved, at least claims, and doesn't know if any of the donation attempts worked. He says that it's genetic material and that ever since his niece was born, he can't imagine life without her. That's the only part that I can kind of understand. I love our niece too, and she only existed because some guy on Facebook decided to donate. I sympathize with an LGBTQ plus person who can't have kids without a donor, but I absolutely can't see myself being involved with someone who might have kids that I don't know about, even if that means there might be families who don't conceive. He's begging me every day to come back, but I obviously can't face him or work through it so soon. I can accept that he's not cheating exactly, but I don't know if I see a way to get through this. The thought of leaving is unfathomable to me, but so is staying after what he did. He says the only reason that he didn't tell me is because of my own struggle getting pregnant and he didn't want to add to the stress, but that the important thing is that he came clean. I obviously don't see that as a justification for lying. I built my life with him and I want to find some way through this. He says that he'll do anything, but what can he possibly do to build back my trust? I'm so lost. Edit 2. Wow, thank you all so much for responding to me with your thoughts. I admittedly got a bit overwhelmed yesterday and had to step out and stop replying. I've decided to sit down with my husband this weekend and discuss some questions that you all raised, including 
What if any thought that he gave to the potential support claims? How many times has he donated? Where the donations took place? Are these our neighbors? Why did he decide to reveal the truth to me unprompted? Was he involved in and he, did he participate in a documentary? Did anyone else in our life know? I don't think getting the above information will change my decision to leave, which you guys were really helpful in clarifying for me. But I do think that it will help give me some peace of mind. Thank you guys. I'll post an update after we talk. All right, folks, what do you think of this one? I mean, I think OP has been put in a really untenable position. And I think what her husband did is absolutely not okay. I understand that it is his body, but he is in a partnership with someone and this could have long-term ramifications for both parties involved. Yeah. Especially since he's not doing this through an official legal clinic. Like, the possibility of someone coming after him for child support is not insignificant. Um, and he has no way to, like, deny it because as far as they can tell, it's just like a, a hookup. You know, there's no documentation, no paper trail, nothing like that. Well, I mean, if there is like a paper trail and whatnot, that does make things a little bit easier in, in that respect. But I do agree, like the child support thing is a pretty big concern because what happens if they do end up getting having to pay child support? They're going to have to pay child support on maybe many children, right? Yeah, and I mean, this is a huge breach in general, too. You know, even if no one ever comes after him, he never meets the kids, Opie still knows the possibility that they're out there. But I also want to point out that it doesn't necessarily seem like he's doing the couples a favor, because if they're struggling with infertility and they don't know which side it's on, Opie's not doesn't clarify, um, then he may not even be providing viable genetic material and could be getting people's hopes up and then nothing happens. Well, it sounds like they he's just supplying donations to lgbtq plus people so i didn't catch that it was only for people struggling with no fertility. i said he and op are, bo are struggling oh, to conceive I see. I see and i don't know which of them is having fertility struggles or if both of them are yeah i mean if they, he hasn't been tested for his own fertility issues then i mean i think that that might even be a little deceptive and underhanded like it's like he gets to pat himself on the back the back for doing a good deed but doesn't never know what the consequence is and that yeah. feels really a little bit slimy to me that you know he just rushes rushes in here you go now i can pat myself on the back i can pretend like all these people are having kids but i never know i never have to deal with any of the consequences yeah i mean i think that there is some uh nuance there in that respect but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck all right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here, and Amber, she has a joke. We have Jovial Bob's computer joke book today. Yeah, Amber was getting tired of the other jokes. We'll still do some of the other ones, but uh, I thought some good old 80s computer jokes might be right up our alley. We'll find out, I guess. What do computers eat? They eat bites. A bit here, a bit there. Oh, a bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. And I have Earl Grey. You look like a very skeptical cat. <laughs> I am very skeptical cat. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Friday, Junior. Happy Friday, Junior. Thanks so much to Amber for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please have it involve reproductive decisions. Reproductive decisions need to involve consent of the various parties and partners involved yeah yeah but thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all tomorrow bye